Now, we've seen in recent days that um, sporting organisations are now starting to say, we're all in on the voice, we say yes, from the Olympic Committee to the AFL and the NRL. Now, maybe I'm old school, but I thought that sport was supposed to be an escape from real life, uh, a place for us, dare I say, to, to meet in the middle, to meet on the hill and focus on one thing that we all agree on for 80 minutes in rugby league's case. What do you think about these organisations now overtly taking a political position that obviously not 100% of the players or the fans will agree with. Well, look, I think it's a, a thoroughly bad development and I am old-fashioned in seeing sport as an escape from a lot of things. And I also adhere to that view that sport and politics don't mix. And the idea that a sporting body, an organ, a roof organisation, can speak with authority on behalf of the whole football code is ridiculous. And how do they know? Um, uh, what players and what um, individual fans think. And because they can never know, they should just stay out of it and leave it to the individual. And next time I go to Cobra Oval to see the George Illawarra play, I hope I run into Graham Richardson. We're all St George supporters. Do you think we argue about the voice when we're talking about how the team's going? The last thing we see in an encounter like that is a time and an opportunity to pursue political debate and political dogma, and I just think it's wrong. And how can you ever know what the, the hundreds of thousands of rugby league fans think of something, or Australian rules fans think of something? And I think the glory of sport is that it's an escape, but it's also something that brings us together. When I was Prime Minister, I used to say sport was a great national cement. And the way in which it, it crossed the divide, cricket, like Australian rules, were those that attracted mass followings, precisely because they reached everybody. Well, the voice is a political issue. People have different views. I've got a view. I'm not going to vote for it. I think it's constitutionally dangerous. But that's another matter. That's my view. But the idea that I would expect Cricket Australia... And everybody knows how much I love cricket or, 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 or rugby Australia. And I, I'm a great follower of the Wallabies. To come out in favour of one side or the other is ludicrous. I'm not asking them to come out against it. And I don't want them to come out for it. Apart from anything else, how do they know what their followers think? And because you can never know, and because uh, it breaks that great rule of politics and sport not, in, not mixing... I think it's a bad development. I also wanted to ask you about a development in Queensland where uh, we know that after The Voice, we move to treaty and truth. Now, a treaty process that, is being, uh, that has now passed through the Parliament of Queensland is potentially going to have a scenario where Indigenous people will be able to knock back mining licences uh, for cultural, environmental or any other reasons. This is the other shoe to drop. For all the conversation about what's in the Constitution and who's going to be the advisory body, we're starting now to see that this is really going to be where things are going to change. How do you feel about veto power that comes via things like treaty? Because obviously no one's handing back the keys to their house and nobody's changing the ownership of the land, so you've got to negotiate somewhere. What does this mean potentially about how we go into the future, considering how that last federal budget was completely built off resources? Well, Paul, the idea that a sovereign nation makes a treaty with part of that nation is absurd. I mean, treaties are things that are made between sovereign states. There's only one sovereignty that we belong to, and that is the sovereignty of the Commonwealth of Australia. You were a real statement of the heart. It had the voice, it had treaty making and truth telling. Now, the government has made it very plain, the Prime Minister's said that they are committed to treaty making and truth telling as well as the voice. So you are right, it's another shoe to drop. It's another reason not to support the voice. And I think the collective response of the Australian public, whatever their views are on politics, whether they've ever voted Liberal, Labor or whatever, beside the point, they will rise up against the idea of a treaty. Now, this nation was settled by the British more than 200 years ago. And, you know, 
sure British colonisation was not perfect, but it was infinitely better than colonisation of other European powers, pretending that a sovereign nation can make a treaty with part of itself. I mean, the very statement of that reveals its absurdity. And I think once the Australian public become aware of that, they will be you know, rightfully quite outraged.